notice things that are suspicious. <laughs> Welcome to the Media Circus, the game show about the news game. And joining us tonight, the mama of Mamma Mia, Mia Freeman. <laughs> From the checkout and author of Almost Sincerely, Zoe Norton Lodge. <laughs> and thought leader, distinguished bald man, and the author of this intro, Julian Morrow. <laughs> and they're up against Andrew Hansen. <laughs> Julian Morrow's evil twin, Peter Berner. <laughs> and 2GB Arvo's host, Ben Fordham, who, who won a Walkley Award early in his career and then went on to do this. And I'm still dirty that we didn't get nominated for that. <laughs> yeah, for Walkley? <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, uh, of course, uh, joining us up here is our fact checker as well, Chaz Lichardello. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, uh, I'm in fine fact-checking form, Craig. Uh, I've even just fact-checked the Immigration Minister, Peter Dutton. I'm a pretty cool character. <laughs> False. Thank you, Chaz. Zoe, Mia and Julian, this week you are Team Australia, as always. And Ben, Peter and Andrew, uh, we've named you after Nick Kyrgios because everyone in Team Australia seems to be against him. Poor Nick Kyrgios. <laughs> He just got dropped by the Davis Cup team, which means that now we're going to have to rely on Ashley Madison Leakes to find out who's sleeping with who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on with the news game. Stitch up. All right. We've stitched together three stories from the week's news. Now, Team Australia, see if you can tell me what the stories are. Here you go. Well, she's outlasted 12 US presidents and 13 British prime ministers. And this week, Queen Elizabeth spent her first night in jail for refusing to issue marriage licences to Johnny Depp's dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Team Australia, what do you think the stories were there? Um, OK, the first story is about the Queen being the longest serving monarch. That is right. It's 63 years, 63 years. What else is interesting about the Queen's career? Nothing. That is correct. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, check. Check. God, she's done heaps. That's why there are so many really interesting news stories about her. And the Queen photographed from four different sides. But here's a question. Which side is her best angle? Yes. Yeah. And what are the other stories there? Um, the other story, the second one, is uh, the clerk in Kentucky who refused to issue a marriage licence to a same-sex couple and wow. had to go to jail. And the third story is Johnny Depp, um, his fiancée, was meant to appear in court about the illegal immigration importation of their dogs, Pistol and Boo, and I, I hate myself for knowing the names of Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you as well. I hate myself <laughs> so much right now. And he said, yes, we um, killed them and ate them. OK, let's see the first story. This week, Queen Elizabeth becomes the longest-serving British monarch. That's right. The Queen has spent over 63 years on the throne, or as she calls it, keeping Prince Charles out of a job. <laughs> In celebration, the Mint released a limited-edition £20 coin, which, like the Queen, is completely unnecessary, but nice to bring out on special occasions. Hi. <laughs> Look at that headline. I'm, I'm, um, I'm really impressed that you're getting all your news from the BBC Children's Channel. <laughs> 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 this is informative, this show. Yes, and of course, the last story this week, Johnny Depp called Barnaby Joyce some sweaty, big-gutted man from Australia oh. a few days before the case of Johnny Depp's dogs went back to court. The case was adjourned, leaving another chapter in the ongoing feud between the sexiest man in the world and Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, in the middle, you were right again, Mia, a Kentucky clerk was jailed for refusing to issue marriage licences to same-sex couples. Well done. She was released there yesterday and she said that same-sex marriage is against God's will. Now, I don't know, but we haven't found any proof that God is annoyed at Kentucky for these laws. And a bolt of lightning has set off a forest fire in the US after it hit a Jim Beam factory and sent thousands of litres of bourbon spilling into a lake. Moments later, the flaming spirit was sucked into the air by a small tornado. Seriously, flaming bourbon tornadoes. They're like, get her out of here! 
a jail. <laughs> that is very Old Testament. It is, is right, <laughs> isn't it? Flaming bourbon tornado is now my favourite drink. That is yeah, awesome. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Chaz, fact check. I really don't like the flippancy of the panel about this story. The Kentucky situation is very serious. If anyone understands about offences against God, it's Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> They're experts. Is that, that chicken? It's not chicken, it's KFC. <laughs> Wow. Uh, well done, Mia. You got three out of three. Congratulations. Oh, no. Team Australia. <laughs> now to Team Curios. Uh, here's your new stitch up. See if you can identify the three stories. British comedy icon Mr Bean marks his second anniversary as Prime Minister today with a huge pillow fight. <laughs> OK, nice. Team Curious, what are the stories? Didn't Rowan Atkinson turn up at Buckingham Palace driving his Mini to celebrate 30 years since right. Mr Bean? Or... That sounds good. Number two is our Prime Minister having two years in government, I'm pretty He's sure. He's been in government two, for two years. For two years. The pillow fight, I've got pillow no fight. idea. Pillow, pillow fight, fight no. might be... Something in Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> well, the government have decided to resolve the same-sex marriage debate with a massive pillow fight <laughs> instead of a plebiscite. <laughs> I mi misheard plebiscite. It was a border force miscommunication. I'll, pi I'll pillow fight. Oh. Okay, the first story there. This week, Rowan Atkinson has celebrated 25 years uh, of being Mr. Bean, uh, or as he calls it, keeping Prince Charles out of a job. <laughs> uh, the last story it's from a US military academy oh. where 24 cadets were left with concussions after they filled their pillowcases with the helmets they were meant to be wearing for the pillow fight. Wow. <laughs> it's tradition. They've done this for years and years and years. It's this big pillow fight they do. And then one year they're like, what if we put the helmets in the pillows? <laughs> and, that, and the middle story was, this week the Abbott Prime Ministership is two years old. And just like all two-year-olds who make a bit of a mess, you try and replace it with Malcolm Turnbull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you guys got two out of three right. Congratulations. Amazing result. Mia, your website, uh, Mama Mia, listed Abbott's achievements as Minister for Women and just published a large blank space <laughs> there. <laughs> that was the article. <laughs> the annoying thing is the person was getting paid per word. So <laughs> just... <laughs> the, but did, so does maybe... Abbott actually engage with you guys much? Does he engage no, with Mama Mia? No, he did before he became Prime Minister. He went on a very proactive um, charm offensive with a lot of um, journalists and particularly female journalists who'd been critical of him, myself included, and were, were critical when he was elected uh, opposition leader. And then there were all sorts, and he used to write for Mama Mia and he used to engage, try to engage with women and deal with his woman problem, as his people referred to it as. And then the minute he became Prime Minister, wouldn't engage with a women's website, why would you when you've got Ray Hadley and Alan Jones and Kyle and Jackie O to talk to? Well, so we've been asking for two years and he hasn't, not just us, but any women's website in you Australia. Did, you did have a little cheeky coffee with him though, didn't you once? That was before he was, uh, before he was elected. And you found him charming. It's hard not to. I mean, oh, he's very... I find it quite easy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he well, yeah, has well, well, He's very personable. Who strikes a gossip in there, you know what I mean? Did Mia Friedman, Tony Abbott. Drink, or... <laughs> no, my mum afterwards said, uh, darling, how was it? I said, mum, it was a bloody disaster. I really liked him. Oh. <laughs> but I still don't get why he made himself a minister for women. That seems a strange call. Oh, it's a man's job. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's... <laughs> It would have been a lot cheaper than put a woman to do it, though. They'd have to pay them as much, so... <laughs> Look, it's been, it's been a tough two years, although this last week with Syria has actually probably been turned things around a little bit for him. Do you think he's going to do better now that he's talking about boat people and refugees and Syrians coming to Australia? Oh, I think um, national security always works for anyone, doesn't it? It doesn't matter what side of politics you're from. If there's something going on in the world and you're dealing with it, it seems to go well, but people seem to have stopped listening to them big time when there's anything to do with the economy, mm. uh, including the Treasurer, Mr Hockey. People have switched off largely to what's going on. It has been a uh, hard two years for Tony Abbott and his government, although there's been some very strong things going in his favour. For instance, uh, Bill Shorten is the opposition leader. <laughs> Here he is with one of his inspirational speeches and I will give you an extra point if you can explain to me what the hell he is talking about. This nation is standing at the edge of a door which is slightly ajar. <laughs> and if we are strong enough to seize the opportunity of the moment, then we will have a bright future. <laughs> yes, that 
That's bad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what happened yeah. to the door? Bold. That. What, what we you guys do to get that? Mm. I think we walked through the door. Yeah. No, yeah. but we're standing at the edge of the door. But, but, that, that's yeah. like the door is there. But is it us? <laughs> yeah, we don't know which it was. Who <laughs> opened the door to begin with? Who left it ajar? <laughs> Why wasn't the door closed? I know, yeah. Well, that's a security breach. It is right? a security <laughs> breach. This is it. Half a jar. This is it. This is outrageous. Short and soft on border protection. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I you're sending us all into a panic. No, I'm afraid uh, because you, of that man. You should be afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid he'll do another speech. <laughs> All right, uh, so at the end of that round, uh, which uh, happened, we've uh, <laughs> Team Australia won. Congratulations. Now, Chaz, what's their prize? Their prize is some of Australia's finest news analysis from Andrew Bolt. Booga, booga. Yammy, yammy, yammer. Booga, booga. Crank, crank, crank. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, me, me, me. China, yeah, China, 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 China. <laughs> booga, booga. The Chinese are going to come and get your job. I'm a scat man. <laughs> <laughs> School. Lesson 91. Never cross live to an unpredictable child. Uh, Channel 7, you try. What's your view on this? Well, it actually makes sense. Good. You crossed to a sensible adult. Now, Channel 10. Adam Todd is in Canberra for us this evening. Well, Hugh, so far the government... Excellent! Uh, this class is going unusually well. Uh, Channel 9, show me your child-free cross. And Danielle Wick and her husband Jamie and their children join us now from the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> yeah, we only use uh, natural and organic products um, on both. <laughs> Whoops. Uh -oh. We only use um, yeah, natural and organic products on our skin as well, so... Um, Specifically told you not to cross. To oh, get out of my sight! <laughs> bored of the news? Yes, if you are bored of the news, this is the game for you. The questions in this round are behind these pictures. Everyone can answer. <laughs> Everyone can answer by buzzing in. Okay, but firstly, uh, Team Australia, you can get a starter. Uh, pick a picture from the board. Okay, I reckon um, I just want to stare into those dreamy eyes in the top right there. I want some, mm, let's go. some Carl yeah. Novik. It's a bit yeah. of Carl, okay. Uh, this week we're going to expand our bombing against ISIS in Syria. Uh, luckily, Carl Stefanovic does have a plan for this. We'll play the first part of his plan and you have to finish it, okay? Anyone can buzz in. Here you go. But ISIS have made their bed and we now have to... ISIS have made their bed and now we have to... Unmake it and make it properly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing you're a strict dad. Uh, when it comes to ISIS, I am. <laughs> <laughs> this was Carl's plan. But ISIS have made their bed and we now have to take the sheets off that bed and try and expose them. Exactly. <laughs> Make the bed, take it off and expose them expose there. Expose the stainy mattress underneath. Yeah, yeah and their embarrassing pyjamas. Yeah, That'll get them. Exactly <laughs> right in the teddy bed. No surprise that Carl has a well-thought-out plan for Syria because he is an expert at surprise airstrikes. Welcome back to the show. Now, we want to give a very special pat on the back to our very own Sylvia. Oh. <laughs> 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 Let's move on now. Team Curious, uh, what's your pick of the board? Why are there two Bill pictures of Bill Shorten there? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? I think there are four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, we get. Oh, okay. Um, I fancy the look of the mystery man. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at that. All right, uh, that's our social media mystery person for the week. Uh, these are real tweets. Buzz in if you can guess who our mystery tweeter is. Is that, is that a generic silhouette or can we draw anything from that? The person does have a tattoo of a question mark yes, on their okay. face. <laughs> yes. It's the Riddler. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. God. All right, let's have a look at the tweets. Big military brings peace through strength. Confucius. He's <laughs> <laughs> still tweeting. <clears throat> I was about to say Kanye, but... <laughs> Same thing. Same, Same thing, yeah. Same. All right, That's let's confusion. go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I love the film We Bought a Zoo, a great family oh. movie. That's David. Somebody who hasn't seen We Bought a Zoo. <laughs> yeah. I love the film We Bought a Zoo. I love the film. Peter Bernard. <laughs> you. Was it Peter? No. Guy's man. never been favourite 34 times. <laughs> oh. Oh. Never have. Let's now. keep going then. Mm. And why is it We Bought a Zoo? <laughs> Ben Fordham. Is it Poe? 
Is it Poe? No. It's Poe's it's Kitchen. Yeah. So, Rupert Poo Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch, well done. Well done Congratulations. Well. That's it. <laughs> what? what was it? What was what? it about the tweet Poe that gave it away? Sometimes Rupert, because he does his own tweeting, and sometimes he just gets a little bit. What, has a, <laughs> has a stroke <laughs> mid tweet? <laughs> If only he could find somebody who could help him with his publishing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back to the news board. And uh, Team Australia, what's your pick? I reckon China. Beijing used an anniversary today to demonstrate its might and colossal power on a spectacular scale. The Chinese President Xi Jinping jumped into his limo this week to view the troops. Now, what was he saying here? <laughs> <laughs> the leg room in these suck. <laughs> Does anybody know how to lower my driver's seat? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, I'm the Pope. <laughs> I bought a Jeep! <laughs> <laughs> Is it, oh, no, I don't know if this works. What did the Flintstones used to look like? <laughs> 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 like, that, like could he have been oh. saying, Wilma! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the actual answer. President Xi yelling to soldiers, hello comrades, hard-working comrades. It's kind of like the worst Mardi Gras that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> actually, if you, if you look quite closely, it's just that President is actually the Google Maps car for China. Have a look at this, see? <laughs> He's just memorising all of the streets. And at the end of that round, the winner was Team Australia. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, team. Yeah. Well, again, Chaz, what is it? I certainly do. Uh, their award is some rock-solid evidence of why Americans need less guns. Residents have been told to keep their pets inside. This dog was shot after someone apparently mistook it for a line. <laughs> News? Uh, what's with all the mess, man? Have you ever wondered what life's like from an elephant's point of view? Uh, no. No, I haven't wondered that. Well, have you ever wondered if Russian President Vladimir Putin could fly? No, but I have wondered if you've eaten all my chips again. If you could enter the worlds on your screen and create your own adventure, imagine that. News, are you stoned? But have you ever wondered what... Is this going to be stupid? It sounds like when someone sneezes into a trombone. I have. You know what, that's it. I'm taking this until you sort yourself out. It's medicinal marijuana. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Look at that cat. Look at that cat. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced that we would spend $44 million to help 240,000 Syrian refugees. But last week, we learnt that Operation Cambodia, the government's deal to resettle refugees from Nauru to Cambodia, has cost $55 million so far, even though only four refugees have actually been resettled. Yeah. That's over $13 million per refugee, which is pretty steep. But let's find out if it's over the top if we pay for a rice hike. Mia and Ben. Yes. <clears throat> All of the items listed here mm. are things the Department of Immigration has spent money on, according to the government's official tendering website. Your aim is to pick as many of them as you can without going over $13 million, OK? <laughs> Your mountaineer is Immigration Minister Peter Dutton, who, of course, was sent to Switzerland this week. Look at him. That's, that's a photo from there. Uh, <clears throat> OK, Mia, you're first up. What would you like to pick? Escort services. <laughs> escort services, well. The government's website shows escort services from the federal police aren't cheap. It must be very high class, discreet <laughs> servicing. Let's see how much it costs. <laughs> you hear the music and everything. Ask, has, has Craig Thompson joined the federal police? Yeah. <laughs> that must be the full girlfriend experience. Yeah. <laughs> it is very hard. 
hard to have an escort experience when somebody's going, yodly, yodly. <laughs> Depends what you're into. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello, ben, yeah. what do you want to choose? So ben? we don't want to go over the edge. You like don't want to go over the top. Yeah. yeah. Mate, I think dog related expenses. Think, yeah, yeah, that's going to be better. I feel sure. it's an unfair game because plush dogs are surely dog related expenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. Plush dogs is like turning Australia into carny folk, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Australia. Anything off the bottom shelf? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see how much they spend on dog related expenses. There you go. Two and a half That's million. A bargain. That's All quite right. a bit. Well done. All right, Mia, what do you want to choose? Um, I'll take the refugee deterring TV drama. Wow. Home and away. This is what the immigration. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much that cost. Oh. 4.1 million. Mm. All, right. All right, Ben. Wow. Am I getting any help here from you boys? Or no. Not? No. Mate. Thank you. <laughs> what do you want to take? Mate, I think we're going to go for the medals. Medals? I'm pretty sure medals are pretty cheap. Now, last month, Border Force revealed a big order of medals for the provision of awards. Although the certificates of participation for at Border Force <laughs> down in Melbourne haven't been handed out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much that cost. Oh. 1.3 million. All right, Mia. Very, very close here. Very close, close at this point. What do you want to pick? I'm going to go um, with the internal fit out oh, no, of the Adelaide, Adelaide office. office. Internal so fit out yeah. of the Adelaide office. In February, the department announced a new internal fit out of Adelaide's immigration office. I don't even know why they have an office there. I mean, the problem in Adelaide is people are leaving, not coming there. But anyway, <laughs> let's see how much that cost. What? Oh. Which means our winner is Ben Fordham. Oh, oh, no, no. Ben Review Clickbait. Let's take a look now at one of the most contentious features of online news clickbait. You know those headlines that tease you with half of the information so you can't resist clicking them and finding out the juicy details? Here's an example here. Watch this guy get caught watching porn in class. Just watch. Mm. Who does this kind of... Silly headline. Oh. Mamma mia! <laughs> Come on. on. Busted! We all clicked on it. Yeah, <laughs> we all clicked, OK. So how low has the world sunk that we're now watching people watching porn? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so 2015's the year that clickbait died. Oh. Really? Yeah. No, we don't, um, you know, uh, generally... You won't believe what happens We next. made a very... <laughs> <laughs> we made a very conscious move away from clickbait because you want people to be there for the right reasons. So you don't mm. want to trick them into reading a story they don't want to read. Look, one news site still refuses to post clickbait, the Australian Financial Review. For some reason, they're sticking to boring headlines like this. ABS comes in for criticism over inflation calculations. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly the Finn needs help, so we've designed a game called Fin Review Clickbait. Both teams will be given an actual boring headline from this week's Financial Review and asked to rewrite it into something more enticing that will appeal as clickbait. So, pens at the ready, guys. Your dreary headline is... Harvey Norman outlays $34 million for dairy farm state. <laughs> See if you can make that into clickbait. And while you're doing it, Chaz, can we have some thinking music, please? Sure, I have this just the thing. US forces <laughs> get the <laughs> nod. <laughs> <laughs> is this what happens if you cross live to the sunrise set at night? <laughs> this is just them doing it now. <laughs> uh, hurry up, guys, because we're watching this. Okay, that's more than enough of Koshi. The Financial Review said Harvey Norman outlays $34 million for dairy farm steak. Team Australia, what did you say? We went with. What did we go for? Which billionaire just spent 34 million on milk? Team Curios? We went with uh, Discount King spends millions on milky teats. <laughs> <laughs> I'd literally die. <laughs> I'm clicking. That's a click. Team Curios are the clickbait champion. Yeah. Well done. Have you got a prize for them? I do, actually. Uh, just to prove that uh, financial reviews, uh, financial news isn't always dull, I've got a clip from the world's most enthusiastic finance reporter. 
How much does it come down to the Fed? Weeks away from a decision there. Fisher indicating it to Jackson Hole. Mm. So they're still on timetable. If they cut today again, a waste. The dollar would weaken anyway on Jackson Hole tightening. On, on Fed tightening. Yeah, I think they want to see how the markets do react to the Fed move and whether the Aussie dollar does fall uh, in relation to that. And if the Aussie dollar does a lot of work, they need to do less. They must today talk about the dollar, right? They must make mention of its weakening still further since the last meeting. Yeah, okay. If there's one thing we learned last year, it's that puns are a crucial part of the news. There's no puns. What do you call a collective noun of puns? A pun? Did I do it? Okay? <laughs> you could have thrown in a pun. Yeah. yeah. I think you uh, christened me the Punisher. <laughs> one of our contestants become the next Punisher. Our first story concerns the release of toys for the new Star Wars movie. Can you guys guess the puns used by the news? If you don't like it, you can take it to the Return of the Jedi's desk. <laughs> <laughs> if there's Obi one sale you attend this year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I am your Father's Day present. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's got to be in there. It's not another. Some people spend their entire lightsaberings on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's in there. Oh, that's, that's, in that's in there. That's not there. Not uh, been... yeah. If you can't afford it, you can always lay a by. Oh. 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 All right, let's see what the news came up with. Rebels with a cause. Some came hand solo, but all left with something to saber. If the first three registers are busy, the next step is obvious for Star Wars fans. Use the four. Um, yeah. Uh, I even I think that's pretty bad. good. Uh, would, would that have been a sackable offence on ACI? No, no, that's a promotion. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to the next one. A story about Big Ben's clock being inaccurate. What puns do you think Melbourne's Nine News made about it? One too many bongs for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it was Thames Pererily out of time. Oh. Oh, yeah. Surely people are ticked off about the. Oh. That is one of them. Well done, yes. That's one of them. <laughs> Time's up for big stupid clock. <laughs> <laughs> ding dong, ding wrong. <laughs> That's, that's, that's not bad. You're the only one that's got one that's actually one of the ones. Yeah. Clock horror. Big oh, Ben oh, running out of time. Yeah. Leaving clock watchers much less ticked off. Oh, you're a pro. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're a pro. Well done, Ben. I'm really pissed off I didn't have clock horror. <laughs> <laughs> one big right. clock up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's, uh, let's go to our final story tonight. Chris the Sheep who not only broke the world record for wooliness, but also the record for news puns. <laughs> oh, New Zealand announces winner of top model. I couldn't help <laughs> it. It's, it's not a pun, but I couldn't help it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't help it. All's wool that ends wool. Oh, 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 that's good. Oh, no. I didn't use that. Was it found by Immigration Minister Peter Mutton? <laughs> <laughs> who gives a flock? <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, nice. You're just commenting on this game now. <laughs> oh, what about he, he, when he was Sean, he was given a new fleece on life? <laughs> yes, that is yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, These puns are really bad. <laughs> you, you've missed most of them. Let's have a look oh. at what the news went with. Chris's rescuers have no doubt the fans will start flocking. He was a little bit sheepish in front of the camera. Oh. The overgrown oh. sheep's new fleece on life. Well, now to a customer who's happy to be fleeced. Oh. And the woolly mammoth who was badly in need of a haircut. Well done, everyone. Well done, the news. Uh, but the real winner tonight is, of course, Team Australia. Oh. Thank you very much for watching. Join us next week. We have, well, actually, we have on the show next week, Chris Barth is coming on. And you, Remington. Oh. <laughs> there you go. See you next week on the Media Circus. Oh.